In this next part with triangles, we're going to talk about the Pythagorean Theorem. And the Pythagorean Theorem is pretty cool. Um, you know, we're not going to get too much into the math because we're really here to just talk about the Pythagorean Theorem. And right triangles are super special for the fact that they can use this Pythagorean Theorem. And they said that if you have one of the angles in a triangle to be a right angle, then we have something to know about the sides where if we can see here that here's A and B are the legs or the edges of the triangle and C is what we call the hypotenuse. So that little diagonal edge is called the hypotenuse where these pieces here are called the legs. If I took the sum of the squares of the legs, that actually equals the square of the hypotenuse. So, and the nice thing about this is with squaring and square roots, um, notice that the length can't be negative. So we're always going to be doing the, um, the calculating the principal square root if we were to find one of the edges. So if let's go ahead and just use this formula. Here, notice that the legs that in which the vertex is a 90 degree angle so and then that diagonal that connects the two legs is the hypotenuse so if I square each of these legs and add them up it equals the square of the hypotenuse so let's go ahead and make sure we note that the legs here and so we can take the squares of each of these legs So 4 squared plus 3 squared, and that will equal the length of this hypotenuse squared, so C squared. It's a really simple arithmetic formula, but yet so powerful. You're like, how easy is that, right? So what we always need to look for is if you have a right angle that in the sum of the squares of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. The most important part is understanding that this diagonal is a hypotenuse and these are the legs. And then when you do that, notice you get 4 squared, which is 16, 3 squared, which is 9, equal to C squared. And 16 plus 9 is 25, which equals C squared. But what number squared is equal to 25? And then you say, oh yeah, 5. Right? And now some of you may say, oh, well, what about negative 5? Remember, length is not negative. So we don't have to worry about the negative length because that just we just automatically omit it. We're only using the principal square roots here. So if 5 squared is 25, then the hypotenuse length is 5. Excellent. Now this angle is pretty, this triangle is pretty famous. Now, when you say famous, you're like, how famous? J-Lo famous? Yeah. Um, it's a three, four, five angle. That's what we call it. Okay, so now we can find a missing side. So this is what I was talking about earlier, is we always have to designate the hypotenuse to be that diagonal that connects the legs. In this case, it's 13. The legs here are B and 12. So when I'm using this formula here, I have to be really careful that one of these legs will be unknown. The hypotenuse is known and one of the legs is known. But this one, I can't plug in these numbers anywhere I want. I have to be very specific. So here, if I have the Pythagorean theorem, it's going to be the same formula, but remember that we have the two legs. So 12 squared plus B squared is equal to 13 squared. So we have 144 plus B squared equals 169. And of course, if you don't know, feel free to always put it in the calculator. Um, and so this one is a little tricky because now we have to kind of organize our numbers. So we have to isolate B squared on one side and therefore we get um, 
169 minus 144 on the right side, which is 25. So B is equal to 5. Okay, so this is a famous one as well. This is the famous 5, 12, 13. Now when I say it's a famous 5, 12, 13 or a famous 3, 4, 5, you're like, are you really saying, seriously saying they're famous? Like, what, what do you mean they're famous? Um, well, they're very special um, triangles because not only if I know the two legs here, let's say, is three and then four. I already know, because it's a famous triangle, the hypotenuse is five. I also know I could take any linear combination of the edges. If I multiplied every edge by two, then I already know all the other sides. So let's say I take this three, four, five, and multiply each edge by two. Then, I have a famous 6, 8, 10. And I could multiply not only by 4, but let's say now I multiply each edge by 4. Uh, not 4, let's do by 7. That means now I have 35 on the hypotenuse, 21 on the bottom leg, and 28 on this other edge. So linear combination means that I am able to have the freedom of multiplying an edge by any number as long as I do all the other edges and I get these other triangles. So I can multiply every side by 2 and get a 6, 8, 10, or I can multiply every edge by 7 and get a 21, 28, 35. It's really up to you, but that's what makes them famous, is they hold, they're proportional to each other, and they hold the 3, 4, 5 length. Same thing with 5, 12, 13. I can multiply each edge here by 2, right, and get a new triangle that's going to be a 10, 24, 26. So it just means that you can ha multiply all the edges by a number and then get a proportional triangle. Okay, let's try an application of the Pythagorean theorem. It says a sailboat has a large sail in the shape of a right triangle. Okay, and the longest edge of the sail measures 17 yards. So the longest edge is 17 yards, and the bottom edge is 8 yards. How tall is the sail? So here's the sail. So you're actually not looking for the hypotenuse, right? You're looking for one of the legs. So let's go ahead and put this in a formula. Take the sum of the squares of the legs, s squared plus 8 squared is equal to 17 squared. Okay, so I know that s squared is plus 8, 64, which is 8 squared, plus 17 squared. So if you don't know what 17 squared is, just go ahead and put it in the calculator. Here's my square button. It's actually directly to the left of the 7. And I get 289. And then I know that s squared is equal to 289 minus 64. And you get 225. Now s is going to be equal to 15. But if you didn't know that, you could definitely take the square root by hitting second and that square button, see the little square root here, and put 225. And it will give you only the principal square root. It knows that it's that you're only doing the principal square root. So then you get 15. It's really up to you, um, unless you want to run through all the powers of two of all the integers you can, but you can just simply just use that square root button as well. So I'll write that over here in calc to find s. Okay, 
So and we didn't originally have S, so I wouldn't box that. We put that there as a placeholder for the formula. So let's write out a nice little sentence. So the sale is 15 yards.